Thank you. Um, obviously, it's my first time here. I've been to a couple of other odd salons before, and I love how you guys really, really get excited by seafaring, buoyant vehicles. <laughs> Let's pretend there's one here right now. Thank you. Unfortunately, the rest of my talk has nothing to do with ships. Our story tonight is set in the late 16th century about a courageous prince named Salim and a beautiful dancer named Anarkali. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of those. They loved each other, but their romance was doomed. I was probably eight or nine when I first heard about Salim and Anarkali. My father, a cinema owner in a small town in India, brought this movie poster home. He held it like it was the dearest thing to him in the world. More precious than his favorite scotch. <laughs> and I was pretty sure he would happily trade me in if he could get to see the movie one more time. <laughs> I, naive in matters of love at that age, asked my dad, what is the film about? And he said, son, let me tell you a story. The love story of Salim and Anarkali. The story begins with the rise of the Mughal kingdom. The Mughals were elite um, warriors from Persia and Central Asia who ruled over the Indian subcontinent for more than 300 years. At their peak, it was the richest kingdom the world had ever known, operating at 25% GDP of the entire world. Also, that's the last economic reference in the talk. <laughs> with a stable kingdom, they could focus on things other than protecting their land, such as science, science, poetry, literature, architecture, alcohol, alcohol. opium, <laughs> and the worst drug of them all, romantic pursuits. <laughs> About the same. Akbar, the third Mughal emperor, ruled for half a century which was unheard of at that time. It's about the same as Robert Mugabe is these days. <laughs> he ruled as a secular king uh, and ran a tight ship in terms of military strategy. <laughs> in order to run a complex empire, he had to take care of some new inventive techniques, like he married 14 times to come up with strategic alliances. <laughs> Salim, Akbar's son, was known as a hedonist. He was known to enjoy his tipple and his joint every now and then. He was a rich and spoiled brat, which is what being the prince of a big kingdom allows you to be. He already had 14 wives by the age of 27. At this point, he's basically marrying just to spite people. You, if you will not give me your kingdom, I'm going to marry your daughter. <laughs> Let's just say, at least in one respect, it was like father, like son. No, that's not Anarkali. That's Madhubala, uh, the actress who played the role of Anarkali in the film um, we talked about, the one that my dad would trade me in for. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Anarkali was a dancer in the court of Akbar. Uh, she was exceptionally beautiful and very gifted dancer. Born under the name of um, um, Sharif Nissa, her mother was worked uh, with one of Akbar's wives. Akbar really enjoyed her dance, and she was one of his favorite dancers. And he was the one who gave her the name Anarkali, which means pomegranate blossom, the flower that gives birth to a pomegranate. What's so special about a pomegranate? This. These are pictures from uh, Persian festivals, if there are any Persians in the house. Yes, uh, pomegranate is huge in Persian culture. Anar means the pomegranate. So Anarkali, the name Anarkali, was a way of recognizing her exceptional beauty and her importance to, Prince, uh, to Emperor Akbar. But Anarkali was having none of Akbar's advances. He was about 50 years old at that time which by medieval standards is about oh, as old and creepy as Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> At this point is 
about when Prince Salim met Anarkali for the first time. Legend has it that he went to the emperor's harem without his father's knowledge, and that's where he met Anarkali. Remember, at this point of time, Salim already has 14 wives, but most, if not all of them, were born out of strategic alliances. So he's never really married anyone for love. He's never really known what love is. He saw Anarkali's dance performance, and he immediately fell for her. Anarkali, for her part, was like, screw that old guy. I want to get to know his son, Prince Salim. Over the course of the next year, both Salim and Anarkali spent a lot of time together under the full moon sky, reciting poetry, you know, the things you do in the 16th century. <laughs> There's no Twitter. <laughs> they fall hopelessly in love and they meet almost every day, but they have to do this in secret. A small band of Salim's uh, trusted soldiers kept an eye anytime they had to meet and they kept anybody away. Why? I mean, if you're gonna be the future emperor of such a huge kingdom, you really are not allowed to fall in love with a courtesan because social structures. Eventually word gets out about the meetings of the prince and a courtesan, a dancer, and Akbar was incensed. He wanted to, uh, he wanted to separate them obviously, part of it was because he fancied Anarkali, but really because he didn't want his son to marry a dancer. So um, Salim goes to Akbar and he says, Dad, I really love this woman and I would like to marry her. And if you will not let me marry her, then we'll sort this out like two grown men do. We'll fight it out. <laughs> Akbar and Salim, emperor and prince, father and son, went to war over who Salim was allowed to love. Salim lost. It was no match on the battlefield. Salim's small group of trusted soldiers, but small group was no match for the Mughal emperor's army. He was, Salim was captured and he was brought to court. And this is where things turned really dark. Emperor Akbar wanted to set an example that would be remembered and feared by generations to come so that nobody did something out of line. He could have easily gotten them separated or gotten one or both of them killed, but he wanted to do it in the most cruel way possible that would be remembered by generations. So what did he do? This. Yes, that's anarchically being taken away, ordered by Emperor Akbar to be buried alive in a wall. Yes, Emperor Akbar ordered that Anarkali should be buried alive in a wall while Salim is watching and while the entire court is watching for the crime of loving his son. Her last words before she was taken away was, I have nothing to fear because I loved you, Salim, and you loved me back. Imagine being just a few feet away from the person you love and they're being buried alive in a wall right in front of you and professing their love for you as their last words. Imagine being buried alive in a wall for the crime of loving a prince. Salim was distraught. He never loved anyone ever again. He married another woman 10 years later, but again, that was for strategic alliances. Anarkali was his first and last love. The love was forbidden forbidden by man-made boundaries that love was not allowed to cross, except it did. Five years later, once Emperor Akbar died and Salim was the ruler, he built a grand mausoleum in the memory of Anarkali. Anarkali's tomb still stands to this day in present-day Lahore in Pakistan, and Salim's last words are still inscribed on it, referencing Anarkali. Emperor Akbar took every effort that he could to wipe Anarkali out of history. It's not easy um, to find more details about Salim and Anarkali. Most of what we know is from a British explorer named William Finch, who was the first person who wrote about Salim and Anarkali. And their love story, a love story that resulted in a brutal separation and a love story that resulted in a grand mausoleum. 
more than 400 years later, the love of Salim and Anarkali still lives on. I would like to take this moment to recite Salim's words, first in Persian as they were inscribed, and then I'll translate them in English. But I'd also like to request you, if you have a loved one in your life, hold their hands right now if they're with you, or keep them in your thoughts if they're not, if they're not physically with you right now. May we raise a toast. Takayamat shukra goyam kardgar kwishra. Ah, garman baz beman, you rui yar kwishra. If I could behold my love, beloved just once more, I would remain thankful to my God till doomsday. To Salim and Anarkali. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah.